So today I'll be sharing with you four simple ways you are able to save money for investment and also how much you should be investing every month. Hello everyone. So recently one of my friends who earns about $7,000 a month excluding bonuses shared with me that he doesn't have enough money for investment. Let me tell you why. Okay, so what we have here is a average fresh grad salary, $3,000 a month. And this is my friend who earns $7,000 a month. So what did he spend on? He has a very expensive car and his car loan is about $2,000 a month. He goes for fine dining and for every time that he eats a meal, he spends about $200. He buys only branded stuff. So his office wear is like Gucci. When he goes out, it's like those hype beast brand. He has a very interesting night life, so every time he go club, he will hang flower, he will do a lot of other crazy stuff. And he has a lot of memberships, so he have gym memberships, he have country club membership. So what I'm trying to say here is that if you have a low salary, which is $3,000, uh, it is totally okay, it's totally fine, it's very normal. Uh, and if you only spend on the things that is necessary, you actually in fact has more money to invest in someone who earns more than you but anyhow spend the money. So this situation is kind of common uh, for people who earns a higher salary. Uh, a lot of my friends who, uh, who earns a higher salary than me, they are actually spending much much more than they should and uh, they are going for fine dining, I'm in the kopi, I'm eating my chai fan, they drive a car and I'm still taking public transport. So it's very common, it's, it's totally fine. So I'll be sharing with you uh, some of the ways that you can actually uh, save money on and she use that money for investment so that you can actually uh, reach your retirement life uh, faster. So right now I'm going to share with you how to actually save more money for investment. So one thing that you can actually cut on is your unnecessary membership. So example, uh, I'm, not as, I, I'm not actually asking you to cut off all your you know, Spotify, your gym membership, or even your Netflix account. Perhaps you can actually share it with your friends or family to come out you know, with a, f a family bundle pricing. And actually, if you don't mind, you do me a favor right now. Uh, you go and calculate how much you are spending per month for all this membership, your gym, your entertainment, your you know your grab pass or any other thing that you know that every month will incur cost and that amount you go and multiply by 12 and that is how much you're actually spending for one year for all this membership and you, from there you can actually see like which one is is necessary which one do you want to keep which one do you think you can cut on so the second thing that we can actually cut on is luxury items. So my friend who earns $7,000 a month, he likes to buy the shirt, type shirt with a little red color logo over here. And then one shirt costs about $500 to $800 uh, per shirt, uh, depending on design, some can even go even higher. So my question is that, would you rather own that shirt or own three Apple stocks? And we all know that Apple is a great company, right? And they have huge potential that can, they actually grow and scale in the future. So it's kind of extreme that people are spending that amount of money for luxury items. So are you willing to you know, cut down on this thing so that you can invest and you know, reach your retirement goal earlier? So the third thing that we can actually cut on are our bad habits. So bad habits includes smoking, drinking, gambling, and nightlife. So this for so my friend who earns seven thousand dollars a month again he likes to go to those KTV he likes to go to those uh disco club to hang flower, uh which is Tianhua. So every time he goes there right uh he he hangs those flowers it's about three hundred to five hundred dollars per night. So let me ask you would you rather have that one night of happiness and you spend three five hundred dollars or would you use that money and go and invest in stocks like Apple, Facebook, Tesla? Those big companies that are very promising that might actually give you something in return. So the fourth thing that we can actually cut on are those expensive meals. Uh, I'm, I'm referring to those like fine dining that cost about $100 over. So it's, it's totally fine if you do it occasionally, like you know, uh, celebrating your family birthday, friend's birthday, or even like you know, your, your, your wife or fiancé birthday or whatsoever. It's totally fine, but if you do it on a regular basis, right, if you go and calculate uh, over a long period of time, it actually can add up to quite a substantial amount. And that money could have been used for investment. And if you ask me to what extreme I would, I would do, right, is that 
I will even eat cai fan every single day, right? With only one uh one egg and one vegetable, right? For the rest of my life, right? So that I can you know invest more money and reach my retirement goal earlier. Right now, I'm going to share with you a very typical total income and total expense chart for a working adult. So when they first started working, right, their income wasn't a lot and they kept their expense to the bare minimum. And years later, they are being promoted and they started to buy more luxury items and more branded goods. And years later, they are being promoted to a manager and they be like, you know, hey, what is public transport? I need a car right now. So they started to buy like a J Japanese car and their expense increased. And years later, they are being promoted to a manager and they be like, you know, hey, this Japanese car doesn't fit my status anymore. I need to drive a Mercedes. I need to drive a BMW. And what happened? The expense increased. So this, honestly, this shouldn't be the case. And this is what we should actually aim for. Let me show you. When your income increase, your expense should not increase that much as well. So that you can actually save that amount of money for investment or to your self-development. Then you can actually reach your retirement goal earlier. Okay, now I'm going to share with you three ways that you can actually allocate your money. So we have the work, hardcore, and insane. So uh, for work, right, it's actually quite uh, easy because a lot of people are already practicing it. And this is the 50, 30, and 20 rules. So 50% on needs, like for example, your day-to-day -day expense. 30% uh, on wealth, it could be on investment. 20% uh, savings, uh, that one is allocated for your emergency uh, fund. So for hardcore, right, it's getting difficult because you're actually allocating 10% uh, more of your needs to investment. And for insane, right, uh, you can actually try that. Uh, it's actually quite challenging because you are only spending 30% of your total income. And the rest of the 70% is go to wealth, which is investment and savings. So the question is that uh, insurance, parents, parent allowance, uh, car loan, property, education loan, which one does it fall under? So insurance, right, if it's like um, health insurance, uh, personal accident, those are under needs. And for those like investment link product, those are under wealth. So you have to differentiate it. Uh, parents allowance, uh, it falls under needs uh, because you need to give your parents money. Car loan, uh, it depending on if you are using the car for uh, your business or is it more of your you no know, day to day right or whatsoever. If it's day to day, then it's under needs. If it's for like your business and you are doing grab delivery, uh, grab car, grab pool or, or whatever, that one is under wealth. So property, depending on you buy it to rent it out or you know for your parents to stay, for you to stay, and for education loan, right? Uh, you have to actually. Finish off your loan first if you have any because uh, most of the time not many people are able to beat the bank rates which is like 4.75% but if you are able to invest in something that can give you higher return than 4.75% then yeah go and uh, invest the money but you know clear it uh, occasionally just try to you know allocate some money every month just to slowly clear off the debt. So the key right to actually accumulating your wealth right is consistency you cannot just like uh this particular month or uh, in january i i just uh use the hardcore method and i just save uh 60 percent of my money and then that's it and then the next month you go and splurge you go and hang flower you go and eat those expensive meals uh it, it doesn't help or you can you know be like very very uh you save like for four or five months right after that you go and buy a branded watch you know, a watch that costs about five figure, and then you know what's the point of you no know, all the sufferings and all the Thai fun that you're eating, right? Is it worth it? Okay, so at the end of the day, right? Uh, personally, I think that happiness is much more important than money, and I'm not actually encouraging you to straight away go to the level three insane whereby you uh save seventy percent of your money immediately. Uh, this kind of thing is actually more towards a uh, progressive, so you can start from the fifty, thirty, twenty. And then you slowly uh, you know, increase by 5% each month to, to find a okay, very comfortable level. And also depending on your situation, if you are married and you have kids or you have elderly parents to take care of, then obviously you will need more money uh, to spend on your day-to-day -day expense which is under your needs and you won't have that much money for your investment. So it depends on situation.
So if you're already doing it or planning to do so uh, and you find it kind of tired to continue or you know keep yourself motivated, I'm going to share with you one good news. Uh, things will only get better because number one, uh, the money that you save right in the bank, uh, you will accumulate bank interest rate. And those bank interest rate uh, can be quite uh, attractive depending on which bank that you are using. So you can get about 1 to 2 to 2.5% uh, every month. It will be credited to your bank account. So you can use that money to you know, cushion some of your other uh, expenditure. So secondly, uh, dividends. So the amount of money that you have invested into stocks, right? some of the companies, they give dividends. Uh, for example, uh, Real Estate Investment Trust. So every quarterly, uh, annually, they will, they will give uh, dividends to their investor and those dividends are actually quite attractive using the uh, within the range of about four to eight percent depending on which company you you invested so the third point is stock growth so the money that you invested right uh, it will definitely go up and down stocks is always up and down so it depends if those companies that you have picked correctly and those companies who are uh, not bound to increase uh, by a lot uh, and have very high uh, growth rate your stocks will definitely increase so let's say if you invest in $100 right now uh, probably in six months time or even one year time that $100 might even increase to $120, $130 and you earn that $30 okay the fourth, po for the fourth point is uh, promotion so even if let's say if you are you no know, having a fresh grad pay which is about $3,000 uh, don't have to worry so much you no know, if you put in the hard work, right, eventually you'll get promoted, you'll get the pay raise. So from a 3,000 can increase to 3.5, 4K, 4.5 in the future. So as long as you, you know, keep your expenditure uh, to what it was, you are able to you know, save that amount of money for investment or even to you know, uh, cushion some of your expenditure. So that's it. That's the story of my friend who earns seven thousand dollars a month and the mistake that he made along the way and some of the tips that uh, I, I introduced on how you can actually cut on your expense to save money for investment so would appreciate a thumbs up if you think that this video has helped you in some way so for my next video i'll be sharing with you 10 uh, things that i look at uh, before i invest in a company so would appreciate if you can give me a subscribe down over here and keep a lookout for my next video. Thank you.